Hello all and welcome to the channel Tech and More. Today we are going to talk about the difference between smoke and sanity testing. One of the most frequently yet most confusing questions asked in the interviews. So without wasting any more time, let's straight away jump to the topics. Now, before actually explaining the definitions, I'm going to show you a screenshot. And this screenshot is of a registration page. And a typical registration page always has first name, last name, email address, zip code, mobile phone number, password, and confirm password, as you can see on the screen, right? Now, uh, as a QA consultant, when you're supposed to start writing down the test cases or test the functionality, at that point of time, you have to be very smart before actually starting the testing, right? Why am I saying this? Uh, that is something that we learn between when we learn the difference between smoke and sanity testing. But for now, take a snapshot of this particular uh, uh, page or the sign up page in front of you. And then let's straight away jump to the understanding of smoke and sanity testing, right? Now, for example, you get this particular sign up page to test from the development team and you wrote 20 test cases out of this particular sign up page, right? Now, uh, what happens is that as you can see, I'll show it again. As you can see, there are mandatory and there are non-mandatory fields, right? And you did not mark the test cases, the required test cases as, as smoke test cases, and you did not know the concept of smoke testing, right? So what happened is that you straight away picked up a random test case and you started testing it. For example, you started testing the, uh, the meaning or the significance of data in the zip code field in the zip code field, right? Now what happened is that you did test it and it was working fine. You were not able to input more than five characters. You were not able to input alpha numeric, alpha alphabets in this particular field and you were good to go. You tested five test cases or four test cases, correct? Same you did for mobile phone number. Now what happened is that when you filled in the data for first name, last name and email address and password and you clicked on sign up, then the error was there that you were that the user is not able to sign up or create a new account. That is a major blocker, correct? So uh, all in all, you wasted testing out those test cases which were not that essential. And is, instead of that, you would have gone and tested the mandatory fields first, the essential functionalities. The keyword is the essential functionalities first, right? Now, what is the disadvantage if you do not follow the smoke testing? So you tested these uh, less critical functionalities first and then you told the developer to go ahead and fix the major functional major bugs and then the developer gives you the build again right now at that point of time you will be supposed to test the bugs that you raised that is the essential functionalities of mandatory fields but you will be you will be supposed to test the non mandatory or the less essential functionalities again so that is a rework wastes a lot of hours right so we introduce the concept of smoke testing with the help of smoke testing as soon as you get a new build first of all you when you are designing the test cases and let's suppose you have 20 test cases so around 15 to 20 percent test cases will be smoke testing or the smoke test cases right so you mark it as smoke ones now as soon as you get the build first of all you go ahead and you make sure that the critical functionalities the most vital functionalities of that particular page or, or of that particular uh, implementation are working fine or not if they are then only you proceed with the other test cases or the detailed testing if let's suppose the uh, functionality the major functionalities are breaking you do not proceed you save your rework you save your time and you give that build back to the developer in the rejected status and you ask her or him that you know what this is very bad and you have to fix this and then provide it to me again that is all smoke testing is do not uh, get yourself confused with the theoretical words or anything it is done before testing and it is a subset of acceptance testing. That is all you need to know. So if someone asks you what is smoke testing, you will straight away say in one line, smoke testing is done to validate the critical functionalities of the build before actually starting the detailed testing. That is all. Listen to this on repeat, but this is the most simplest definition. Smoke testing is done to validate the critical functionalities are working fine or not before starting the detailed testing. That is all smoke testing is. I hope that this is quite clear. Now let's jump on to sanity testing, right? Sanity testing uh, is wherein you raise bugs. The bugs are fixed and given to you. 
and then you validate and make sure that the bugs have been fixed and the build is working as expected. So it is an opposite of smoke testing. Smoke testing is done before the uh, actual detailed testing starts. Sanity testing is done after the actual detailed testing has been done. As you can see on the screen, the first line says to verify the bugs that have been fixed after the build. So you got a build, it was stable, you uh, tested it, you found a couple of bugs, you raised them, the development team fixed them, gave it back to you, and now you are ver verifying that those bugs have been fixed or not. And after the fix, whether the complete build is stable or not, that is all. So sanity testing in very simple words is that you verify the build after the detailed testing is done to make sure that the bugs that have fixed are working as expected or not. That is all sanity testing is. Right. I hope that the very easy difference and the very obvious difference between sanity and smoke is clear. To make things more easier for you, I have put up a flowchart in front of you that you can see uh, with two different flows or two different sections going on. The first one is initial build when the software is relatively unstable. So when you get the unstable build, that is when you do the smoke testing. Now the smoke testing is done. Right. Uh, and uh, I mean, it is done again, it is done and you have performed the different tests. Now you were doing and you found some bugs, which were not major, right? And the build is relatively stable. Now you give the uh, bugs to the development team, they fix it and then they provide you the build back, right? So it is a very, very stable build as compared to the unstable one before. Right. So when you make sure that the bugs have been fixed and the build or the particular functionality is working as expected on a relatively stable build that is termed as sanity testing. That is all. No need to go into deep, deep theories, complex words. This is all you require. So if you want, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, watch this video again, watch the definitions again, but all in all smoke testing is done before the actual detailed testing starts. Sanity is done after that. There are two opposite poles. Smoke testing is done to validate the critical functionalities when the build is received. Sanity testing is done to validate the overall functionalities after the build is done or after the stable build is received. That is all you need to know. I hope that this explanation is clear to you and you are able to give crisp answer in the interview. But of course, if you have any issues, any questions, any doubts, please comment and we make sure to reach out within 24 hours. And uh, I hope that this video was helpful to you. And uh, I hope that we that, that we meet again soon. Thank you so much.